Please be seated. I want to thank our students and our teachers and everyone else who had a part in this production. They did a wonderful job, didn't they? Uh, before we open up the Word of God for a quick sermonette, let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Most heaven gracious Father, thank you so much for all that you've done, for all that you're doing, and the lives of our young people. And right now, I just want to take out this time to pray over them, to pray for them, because I know Satan wants to sift them as wheat, but God, I know that you have gr bigger and grander plans. That for every young person that is here represented underneath the sound of my voice, and Lord, not only just our students, but every single one of our young people that belongs to this church, we're asking that you put a hedge of protection around them. That may they remember times like these, that they know that not only do you exist, but they can turn to you at any time in their lives that they need you, and you will be there. But not only that, Lord, I'm going to go to step beyond. May they be there for you, for your work, for your worship, for everything that you you are calling them to do, may they answer the call and do marvelous and fantastic things for the glory and the honor of God. And Lord, that doesn't just go to our children. It goes for us as well. Many of us have come here to church feeling empty and, and, and unfulfilled. And Lord, I can honestly say it's because we have not yet answered the call that God is placing upon our lives. May we all pick up the torch. May we all pick up the word of God. May we all pick up our relationship with Jesus Christ so that we may lift him up and you'll draw all men unto him. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we just uh, heard a, and saw a play of Jesus' birth, of the Christmas story. And the question I have for you this morning is, so what? Why does it matter? Do you know that that pagans and, and people around us all around celebrate the birth of Christ and they go out and they steal and they mug in order to get money to, to buy presents for their, for their children at Christmas. And they say it's to the glory and honor of God. Is that to the glory and honor of God? Just last Christmas, my next door neighbor, he was traveling down on Barker Cypress and, and, um, and Clay. And as he was at an intersection, a guy pulled up to him and, and put a gun to his head, shot a bullet through his window, and said, give me all your money. And he asked him, why are you doing this? He says, I need to buy presents for my kids. Now, I, I, some way, I think we're getting a little bit mixed up of why we're even here. Why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus? And we know that it, it's not exactly this time of year, but why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? You know, as I think about it, even as we are as human beings, this is a time for us to learn how to give, isn't it? One thing I can honestly say is that when Jesus came and he decided to be born as a child, he decided to come in order to give more. And he gave the most ultimate sacrifice of not only being born as a human, not only living as a human, not only just dying as a human, but he rose as a human, yet all the while still being fully God. I want to share this with you today because I, I think I have a reason why I'm saying so what. And it's found in Luke chapter 23. This is not the, the Herod that tried to persecute Jesus when he was a, a baby, but this is a, a Herod that beat Jesus towards the end of his life. This is Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 8. We're just going to read verse 8. Luke chapter 23, verse 8, this is after Jesus had been handed over to Pilate, and now he had been handed over to Herod because neither one of them wanted to do anything and crucify Jesus. But listen to these words, and I, I want you to hear them clearly. It says, now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him. He wanted to see Jesus, and why? Because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. You know, why are you here today? Because I, I, I ask that question because sometimes I have to recognize and change my motives because a lot of times we come here and we expect to see the miracles of Jesus. We want to see the power of Jesus, yet we do not want to receive the characteristics of Jesus. You know, at this time of the year, it's supposed to be one of the most selfless times of the year, and yet we find out it is one of the most selfish times of the year. 
That a lot of times we have turned Christmas away from being about Christ and it's turned into what do I want and how can I get it. It turns to something that we can do for ourselves rather than something we can do for others. I was listening to a radio program last night and Chuck Swindoll was preaching and he, he spoke a little bit about the world philosophy today. I'm going to read this in your hearing. He says, education says be resourceful, expand yourself. Psychology says, be confident, assert yourself. Religion says, be good, conform yourself. Materialism says, be satisfied, please yourself. Pride says, be superior, promote yourself. Humanism says, be capable, believe in yourself. Philanthropy says, be generous, release yourself. Jesus simply says, worship God and serve others. You know, I think that one thing God is extremely tired of is of us always looking in the mirror at ourselves, doing things for ourselves, praying for ourselves, giving to ourselves, serving ourselves, and yet we serve a master of the universe who did nothing for himself but did everything to honor his heavenly Father and everything to give things to others. If you want to know the mindset of Jesus Christ, I invite you to turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, as we're closing here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. As with a somber heart, I, I read this in your hearing. It says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man." And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. I don't know about you, but when I was praying about this last night and all this week, I felt extreme guilt as I realized I do a lot of stuff for myself. But if I'm going to call myself a Christian, if I'm going to be a follower of Christ, then it means that I need to start doing exactly what Jesus says in Mark chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 28 and 30, uh, through 30, that we should love the Lord our God with all of our whole hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and that we should love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. Now, we just saw the organization NAPS, and they came up here earlier and gave a, a fantastic presentation, but that's exactly what it remains to a lot of us. It's a presentation because we'll go home with a full cupboard of food, a refrigerator that's extremely full, and say we have nothing to eat. (laughs) We will go out for Christmas, and, and we'll spend thousands of dollars, and we'll come and sit down and say, I didn't get what I wanted. We'll go and drive in our cars, and we'll pull up next to our coworkers in their car and say their car is nicer than mine. We'll visit one another in in our houses, and we'll look at each other, and we'll ask, why is their house better than mine? And it becomes about me and mine and myself and I. And I'm telling you right now, God is tired of it. When will it start being about you and I? When will it start being about God and our relationship with him and about our relationship with others? My most favorite text in all the Bibles, Micah 6, verse 8. He has shown you, O man, and what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Church, the devil wants us to be selfish. He is not only the prince of darkness, he is the prince of selfishness. And if we're not careful, we are actually likened to his image and being conformed to his image rather than to the image of Christ. How do we know whose image we're being conformed into? Do you spend more time worrying about yourself, or do you spend more time worshiping God and serving others? I pray that this season of Christmas, it will not be about what we can get and what we can receive, but it will be about what we can give, because as the Lord said himself, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. 
May this season be about others rather than just about ourselves. And I'm telling you right now, if the church understood this, if the church lived this out, the devil would have to leave because he would have no place in here. You want to know why the church in the book of Acts was so powerful? It's because they sold all their possessions, laid it at the apostles' feet, and no one was in awe. No one wanted or needed anything because they all had the common possessions. But I'm telling you right now, I know we're not there yet, but I know that God is asking us to be there. When I asked earlier, so what? So what? Jesus came and he lived as his child and he lived as a man and he died as a man and, and still remaining fully God because he wants us to mirror him and to live our lives worshiping God and serving others. If there's anything that you can leave here with today, I just want you to hear those words, worship God, serve others. In other words, I'll tell you this, if you really want to worship God, then serve others. And if you really want to serve others, then you'll worship God. It's not two separate things. It's one and the same. It's the way that Jesus lived his life. It's the way that he is calling us to live ours as well. We're not going to have a a big shebang as we're about to have our, our closing prayer. I'm going to go ahead and ask the congregation to stand. And we're just going to ask a simple prayer that that God will come into this church. He'll come into our hearts. And if you're a visitor here today, it doesn't matter because I want you to leave this place thinking about others. And and Jesus, he thought about others more than himself. But he said, I'll give you this, this tool. You can think about others as much as yourself. If we can do that, I'm telling you right now, we can finish this gospel work. Not only in other countries, but right here at Katy Seventh-day Adventist Church in our little tiny neighborhood, we can start serving God in a way that will usher people in because we're thinking about others and we're worshiping God. Let us now bow our heads. Our most heavenly, gracious Father, we're asking that you take self out of the way. And I know that there's some things that have happened to us, ways that this world has shaped us and and is trying to manipulate us. But God, right now, we're asking that we put those things to the wayside because you are the author and finisher of our faith. You are the one who supplies all of our needs. You are the one that taught us and showed us how to become selfless in the middle of a selfish world. So God, show us how to fully worship you and truth, and in spirit, and how to fully serve others. Because God, whoever will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, will actually be the least. So we may we consider ourselves the least now, because whoever humbles himself will be exalted, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and God, we want to humble ourselves before you have the chance to do so. So Lord, right now, I'm praying over the Katy Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lord, I am pleading on their behalf, in the power of Jesus Christ, that, Lord, you show us how to worship you and how to serve one another. Because, God, when this is done, the word of God is fulfilled. Life is fulfilled. The duty of the Christian life is fulfilled in worshiping God and serving others. So, Lord God, we love you. We serve you in all that we have. And may today, may may. This very day, I I challenge all the people, I challenge myself to go out of our ways today in order to serve someone other than ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope we all heard that challenge. Today, this day, started out, it might be monetarily, it might be going out and doing something, it might be a phone call, it might be just a word of prayer, but do something for someone else uh, today rather than just doing something for yourself. And that, and that way we'll be serving God in everything that we do. At this time, we'll go ahead and have a, uh, you can be seated. And we'll actually be escorted out by our, uh, by our ushers and deacons. And I pray that we leave this place worshiping God and serving others. Thank you so much for being here today.